Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime on YouTube, baby. And I just want to tell y'all a few things and see what y'all think about this. The night that Demetrius and Maserati Rick went at Big Ed Hansen at Operation Get Down on Grasher and Hopper, the real plan was to shoot him, knock him down, pick his ass up, and bring him with us. That was the real plan, but Big Ed had plenty fight left in him after Demetrius and Maserati Rick unloaded two nine millimeters on him. They unloaded two nine millimeters point blank range at Big Ed Hansen, and Big Ed Hansen had a lot of fight left after that. Understand that because the real plan was to hit Big Ed's ass right there at Operation Get Down coming out, snatch his ass up, throw his ass in the van, and cut his ass up. But Big Ed didn't go down like that, baby. Big Ed had plenty fight left in him after they hit his ass with two nine, millers, um, two nine millimeters unloaded it on him. Called him over to the car. Hey, Big Ed, come here. He walked over to the car knowing he owed them niggas and knowing he wasn't going to pay them niggas and them niggas unloaded two nine millimeters Maserati Rick was driving, and Demetrius called him over to the car. He walked over there, and Demetrius is the one that started shooting his ass first. Ask him if you think I'm lying. The plan was to take his ass somewhere and chop his ass up. Understand that. And let me say something else to you all out there so you really know this. <clears throat> if a nigga hit you, knock you down, Say shoot you in the head and you out cold. He an amateur if he leave you. That's amateur night at the Apollo. Understand this. If a nigga shoot you in the head and you knocked out, nigga, you out of here. D ain't leaving you there, bro. You coming with him. And he didn't hit you in the head and you out cold? Nigga, you coming with him. And if you ain't out cold when he gets your ass in the car, he finna finish shaking your goddamn ass the way you will be out cold. Understand that. Because he ain't using no more gun. That first gunshots, that's it. When he snatch your ass up and get your ass in the car, trust me, they got something for your ass. Them hatchets and them goddamn shanks, them hatchets is a motherfucker, bro. A razor sharp hatchet will cut your ass up, brother. So understand this, it's amateur night at the Apollo. When you shoot a nigga in the head and leave him in, you could have took him with you and disposed of him in whatever manner you choose. Understand that wherever you want to dump him, after you get through chopping his ass up, understand that. So know, as I'm telling you all, it's amateur night at the Apollo when you shoot a nigga and leave him there and he's disabled. You shoot a nigga and he's out, shot him in the head. Nigga, he coming with us. Nigga, as soon as he get in there, he finna be disabled as soon as he hit the car. Understand that. As soon as you get in the motherfucking car, you finna be disabled. Understand that. Because motherfucker finna go to your heart with them motherfucking knives, with them goddamn shanks. Finna hit your ass like this. So if you ain't dead, he gonna make goddamn show you is when he get your ass in that car. And he didn't hit you in the head. Ain't no more bullet action. Ain't no more gun action. Because we don't need the noise. Understand, guns create a lot of noise. Hatches you can't hear. You can't hear axes and hatches when he gets your ass in that basement. Understand that. So I'm just explaining to you all what the real plan was for Big Ed. After they shot his ass at Operation Get Down, the real plan was to take his ass somewhere and chop his ass up and throw his ass out. Understand what the real plan was. And Big Ed was a lucky man. He was a lucky man. Big Ed came up fine like a motherfucking soldier after being hit with two nines. Many niggas ain't gonna do that, but he did. Understand that much respect. You hit a nigga and he didn't go down, you got to get my heart, I got to try again. And Big Ed was willing to go at it again. God damn it, right over there to Miles Roddy Rick. Kyle watch nigga come the fuck on out here. You ain't got motherfucking Demetrius with your motherfucking ass now. Bring your ass out here. You ain't got Demetrius with your ass now. You and him then fell out, nigga. Bring your ass on out here in the middle of seven mile now. 
You ain't got that nigga D with you. Nah, nigga, you and him then fell out. Nah, just like me and you over a bitch. You and him then fell out over a bitch, and me and you fell out over a bitch. Now bring your bitch ass on out here and let me have your ass right here in the middle of seven mile at your own car wash in front of everybody. And you know motherfucking well Maserati Rick ain't going for that. Motherfucker, here I come, goddammit. Like a whirlwind, here the fuck I come. Just for you, big head. Understand that. And what, neither nigga backing down. Them niggas came out there like soldiers. Goddammit, here I come, motherfucker. You come for me, I'm coming. Boy, them niggas went out there just like a duel in a western. Counted paces off, goddammit, fire. And them niggas both was good shots because they hit each other. Understand that both them niggas was good shots. They hit each other. And understand this. Notice when you fucking with guns and murders and all that shit. I used to go to Chet's damn near every day to practice on targets on how to shoot a nigga and how to hit a nigga. Not just how to shoot a nigga, how to hit what you shoot at. I spent a lot of hours in Chet's gunshot learning how to aim and sight and don't let my hand move and knock a nigga down. Understand that. I took my lessons on how to shoot a gun from Chet's gunshot. From Chet. Chet say he was over there in the war and used to pull up this German gun he gave me and fired that motherfucker straight out the water in mud and saved his life with a German coming at him. Chet was a bad man. And Chet gonna make sure you got the right load and the right gun that's gonna fire underwater, in water, coming out the water, in mud, coming out of mud. Chet gonna arm you right, baby. Chet's gunshot. And we got the salute. Chet. Chet's gunshot been gone quite a while. And we remember Chet here on America Real True Street Crime. Understand that. We remember Chet and Chet's gunshot. I could see him now, nah, heavy set, light skinned fella. A lot of times smoking him a cigar, and we sit there and check, chop up the game and tell you how to chop a nigga up just as well. Understand that. Chet's gunshot is who showed me how to sight and knock a nigga down. Eddie, it ain't shit to carry a gun. Eddie, it's something to carry a gun when you're a marksman, when you hit what you shoot at. And that's what you're gonna need to do with these niggas out there in the street. You're going to have to know how to hit these niggas when you shoot at them. You just can't be like them niggas firing oozes wild and I'm just hitting everything but the motherfucker you looking to hit. So Chet made sure I could hit what I shoot at. And I just spent so much time in Chet's gun shop and then over there at Big West on Shane right down the street from the 19th hole. Big Chet was a retired police officer and he had a gun range right there on Shane right down the street from 19th hole. And me and D used to go in there all the time and practice our shot, baby. Because we got to hit what we shoot at. Ain't none of that motherfucking, you might have two, three, four shots. No, nah, this one shot nigga got to hit. And it's got to hit the target. Understand that. Ain't no goddamn Uzis. Understand that. We got to hit what we shoot at. And that's the problem today. And understand this. <clears throat> The computer games train a nigga how to shoot more than anything now. I used to buy computer games, the, the, the kind you see in the store you put a quarter in. I had a Galago, I had a Pac-Man, and I had this one that had a pink and a blue gun. It was a shooting game, and it had a pink and a blue gun, and, you know, you shoot targets and shit. And I used to practice on that computer game all the goddamn time to where I was shit. Higher than a master, higher than a, I tell you, I was the number one shot. Boy, I used to shoot the shit out that motherfucking computer game and spend all day and hours in Al's barbershop playing it. We start betting money, nigga, I'll shoot you. No, nigga, I'll shoot you. All right, nigga, put a quarter in there, $100 bet, nigga, I'm gonna out shoot you. Nigga, we used to be practicing shooting as marksmen. Who the best shot? And Al was a military man, so you know he thought he was the best shot. So I had to practice like a motherfucker, you understand? Because I thought I was the best shot. Understand that. We was very competitive. That's something you all had to know about us. We was pool, Gallagher, Pac-Man, the shooting gang, goddammit. We was betting and 
competing with all of it. I understand right there at Al's Barbershop. And I'm going to come back to your backyard beast training, baby. I'm going to bring Al's Barbershop back to you, baby. How we used to gamble in there. All kind of shit we used to do at Al's Barbershop. But let me just give you a little story before I go about Al's Barbershop to warm you up. Backyard beast training. Me and Al came in the barbershop that morning. <clears throat> he had a dog at the house. He was living at Redford. And Cutman had came and opened up the shop this morning. And me and Al was coming in. I had met him in his house. And we had been playing this detective game on the computer where he tried to figure out who killed who. So we go up to the barbershop and take care of some business. Al walk in the barbershop. Now, he got a dog at home living with him. The dog lives with him. He got a cat living in the barbershop. So he go up to the barbershop, me, him, and cut man there. Me and Al walk in together, cut man cutting. Al walked to the very back of the shop by the back door, and that's where the cat was. Al reached down to play with the cat. Obviously, he must have smelled like motherfucking dog or something because he got a dog at the house. And when he started, here, come and kick, 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 he playing with the cat. I ain't never seen this before in my life. It's a true story, and cut man will verify it because he's seen it with me. This motherfucking cat, man, whatever the smell Al had on him, this cat, I ain't never seen a cat do this before in my life. He hit Al. <laughs> he scratched Al's ass up so fucking fast and quick with them claws. He hit Al here, hit Al here, hit Al here, hit Al. I mean, he did this shit in record goddamn speed. This motherfucking cat... Fucked Al up so motherfucking quick. I ain't never seen no shit like this before in my life. Man, cut man cemented. So, wow. The cut just choo, 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 scratched him up every goddamn way. Al runs up to the goddamn stand and grab his nine millimeter. Now he wants to shoot the goddamn cat. And me and cut man telling him, man, don't you shoot that goddamn cat. Don't you do that, Al. I'm shooting that motherfucking cat. I'm shooting that motherfucking cat. Me and Cut Man said, no, don't do that to the cat, Al. The man must have smelled dog on you or something. You know you got a dog living with you. You came in here and smelled, fuck that cat. He won't be scratching me no more. He getting the fuck out of here. He goes back there and chase the goddamn cat out of the back. He opens the door. Bitch, grab his line off his side and shoot the cat. Try to shoot the cat in the goddamn foot. Missed the cat run out the door and hauled ass. So he tries to shoot the cat in the foot and he ain't a good enough shot to shoot the goddamn cat in the foot. So when he go to shoot the cat in the goddamn foot, the cat take off running after he missed the first shot and get the fuck away. That was one fast cat and that was one of his nine lives used up fucking with Al. So subscribe, join up over there on America. America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. Join up, sign up, give me a $5 script because the story's finna roll like rock and roll, baby. The story's finna roll like rock and roll. So come on over there to America Real True Street Crime on Patreon and I gave you this little jewel just to wake you up this Sunday morning and say what's happening. So Simmons Law, check out. It should help you out. Jelani's Tasting Table, 420 Style is his specialty, baby. 420 Style, Jelani's Tasting Table is his specialty. In Top Tier Cuts 313, you better get your cut for this Super Bowl weekend, baby. Top Tier Cuts 313, Super Ken, and you better get a cut for this Super Bowl weekend, baby. If you want to look fly, Top Tier Cuts 313, Super Ken for the weekend, baby. And I'm going to put my Super Bowl pick down right here, right now. I got to go with Philly. I'm going with Philly. I, fuck it. I'm going with Philly. So y'all can say what you want. I'm taking Philly over Kansas City. I'm running with Philly, baby. I'm running with Philly. I've been running with Philly quite a while now. I like that defense. They got a terrible D. I like Philly's defense. They say defense win championships. So we're going to find out this Sunday because Philly got a defense, baby. And if defense win championships, Philly should be the winner. But we're going to find out Sunday because the game got to be played. What's your pick, baby? Who you running with? I'm picking Philly. So subscribe, share, and like, and stop in 
over there on Patreon and check us out. A five dollar script. And we got How to Get Away with Murder, Demetrius Style, featured on America. And you got to put the America in if you're looking for me. America, Real True Street Crime on Patreon. How to Get Away with Murder, Lessons D Taught Me. Understand, that's what we're featuring today. And I just want to warm you up for it right here on YouTube. Come on in to Patreon and check us out. Understand that I had to warm you up right here on YouTube and invite you to come on in to America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. Sweet Lou Stevens, baby. I see you shining out there, baby. I see you shining. And as I say, Veranda Odoms, I got to say thank you to you too. And G Twilight, thank you too. And Ken Kid. I got to say thank you too. Dale Carter, my man. Thank you, my brother. And Carl Henderson. Thank you, my brother, as well. And Paulie, I got to give a shout out to you. And I got to say to my man, Lionel Nathan, thank you too. I got to give a shout out to Lionel Nathan and say thank you to my brother. So I give a shout out. And I got to put my book on my side and shout all of you out because I treasure every one of you. Understand that everybody over there on America, Real True Street Crime on Patreon. And come on, be a patriot, baby. Come on over there on America, Real True Street Crime, and be a patriot. It only costs you $5, brother. A $25 script gets you a free sweatshirt or T-shirt. So come on over on America, Real True Street Crime, and take a look at how to get away with murder, Demetrius style, baby.